everybody, Alicia G here with the new release Wednesday show, and today we'll be reviewing Generation X number 9. Now this is the last issue that's going to be using the normal numbering before it switches over to the legacy numbering, so the next issue will be 85. Generation X is written by Christina Strain, with art by Emakar Pina. Now the series has been going really strong. This is so far my favorite X book, hands down. I'm totally biased because I'm a Jubilee fan. Um, and I used to read the original comic. It's so good. This book feels like the original. A lot of interpersonal drama. Um, it's, it's a character-driven book. And if you're into character-driven books, this is the one for you. I reviewed issues one and two as my first big review for New Release Wednesday. And so I wanted to kind of go back to Generation X and visit where we last, from where we last left off. The characters have grown quite a bit since the first two issues, which were definitely more of an introductory issue. And now we are in the meat of the first major plot, which is M-Plate is back. Except M-Plate isn't the elephant-looking faced brother of Monet that we remember before. This is M-Plate, as in M fused with her brother. Ah, uh, those weird St. Croix family values. So, Monet is a problem right now. Jubilee and Chamber are aware that Monet is a problem and are tracking her down. So, it's a lot of drama with the original Gen X kids, or at least the ones that have survived, between M, Jubilee, and um, Chamber. And then now, we've got Husk back. Husk, in the last issue, issue 8, was helping Bling out with some trauma she has from a previous experience with M-Plate proper, not M-Plate fused with his sister. But then when this M-Plate attacked Bling again, it brought back all those feelings of helplessness. So Paige, who's now working on a PhD to become a psychiatrist or a psychologist, is helping her with this. And that's awesome! Paige is finally doing well! I am so happy about that because previous writers, we won't name names, have treated her like crap. So it's great to see she's finally doing well. And so this issue brings back a lot of the original characters, full-fledged, full brings in a lot of characters that kind of get neglected by the other books. You get Mercury in this issue, which is pretty cool. And it calls back to when Brian Wood had that whole thing where Bling liked Mercury. So I think there's still something there. We just didn't actually get to see much of it because their scene was kind of brief. But the thing that's great about this issue is we're starting to see some things. There are two relationships that are starting to build in Generation X, and that is Jubilee, Jubilee and Chamber, which I have been wanting to get together since New Warriors in 2007. Please, Christina Strain, make this a thing. And new character Nathaniel Carver, a.k.a. Hindsight, with um, Benjamin Deeds, a.k.a. Morph. Now, this is a great thing because we're getting to see um, two characters really just grow together. They didn't know each other at the beginning of the series and they've just grown together and it's very organic and natural and there are road bumps and I love it. It's great. So Generation X is doing really well right now. I'm building those things. The character development. We even get a nice little story where Quentin's finally realizing Quentin's the only isn't the only person in the universe that matters and that his selfish acts and actions screw everything up for everybody else. And because he got it pointed out to him by the only person who seems to care about him, and that's Benjamin, he gets upset. And he leaves the school. So we're going to see what happens with that in the next issue, probably, because if Quentin goes missing and took Krakoa with him, that's going to be a problem. Another thing about this issue that was really great is they addressed something that was mentioned a few issues back, where Jubilee said the only thing that she feels is keeping her vampirism in check is the donor blood and her amulet. And then she and Blaine get trapped underground. Jubilee lost a lot of blood from ending up impaled on a rebar. Krakoa caused earthquakes. It's a long story. And then realize she skipped breakfast. So Jubilee has actually become a minor... Um, obstacle in this issue. She almost becomes the villain, but manages to keep control of herself long enough for Bling and a Morlock that M-Plate hadn't finished nomming on uh, to escape and try to find help. 
The others manage to find Bling and the Morlock first, and then Bling tells them that Jubilee told them to go ahead, she was too weak. What it actually meant was Jubilee sent them along so she could do something drastic to distract herself from the pain. And if you have a low gore tolerance, this issue gets a little iffy. Jubilee ended up impaling her hand on a different rebar to distract herself from the pain. She really takes after Logan in some of the weirdest ways sometimes. Jono, or Chamber, decides, okay, well, you look like crap. You haven't fed. I'm going to give you some blood. It's always been inconsistent whether Chamber has blood or not, but I guess he has blood now. She feeds off him, and then Nature Girl and Eye Boy show up and see it with Shogo, and Shogo sees his mom feeding on someone and is terrified. So this issue had a lot of heartbreaking moments, had a lot of great moments, and I think I've reread it about 10 or 15 times. Amilcar's art is really hitting its stride. It always felt suited for a horror comic, and we finally get a horror comic. And I am so excited because I love this aspect of it. His art is knocking it out of the park. Strain continues to do well with inner character relationships. And honestly, I think I have annoyed my friends with how much I recommend and talk about this book. What I'm trying to say is this issue, I'm going to give a 10 out of 10. I'm going to recommend it. I will recommend Generation X till my dying breath. It is a good book. That is my top recommendation right now. Go read it. The first trade paperback is out. The second trade paperback is going to come out in February and is going to collect the survival of the fittest and the arc leading up to it. It's going to contain issues, I believe, 7 through 87 with, which includes the legacy numbering. So be sure to check that out. Like I said, Generation X number nine is on sale right now. Pick it up at your local comic shop. Once again, I'm Alicia G for New Release Wednesday, doing the new review. You can follow me on Twitter at um, Wonderbread, or you can follow me at Instagram, also at Wonderbread. I'll check you later.